Why can't you stay a little longer? You got me, got me going under. I'm a weak child. So, good morning and welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ. Absolute beginner's guide to catching mackerel on a budget. Um, we're gonna go down to tackle shop in a bit, um, talk to Tony about uh, the gear and what have you, the gear that I've got here, um, and how much it cost, etc. But you can get down on this beach, or get down on the beach anywhere on the south coast, or anywhere in England really, at the right time of the year, with a 50 pound rod, reel, and tackle rig up, and catch yourself some fresh mackerel. There are a few things to note. One, safety. Put a shock leader on. Don't, don't just be casting with the reel, the, the line that's on the reel. You don't know what braking strain it is. Um, you're casting out leads repeatedly. You need something that's gonna be a little bit of abrasion resistant and a little bit of resistance to the casting. So for safety reasons, please put a shock leader on it. Ask the tackle shop to help you. With that. Two, watch out for swimmers. Um, on the days that the mackerel are in, are also the days that people like to go swimming. And people will swim just straight across in front of you. So just watch out for that. You don't want to be catching any swimmers. Third thing, and this is where I start preaching, put my preacher hat on. Have an idea in your head how many mackerel you need. So once you've caught that number, start catch and release, start putting them back. If you're going to put them back, try, and not, try to not handle the mackerel. Just hold the hook and shake them off the hook. Okay, there is some talk that handling mackerel doesn't do them good. I don't know how true that is, but you know, to be on the safe side, try not to handle the mackerel. There's nothing to stop you having a bit of sport down here, um, but don't take more than you need. Okay, so work out how many you need for you, for your neighbours, your friends, etc. How much you want to put away for bait, etc. And then that's it. Stop at that number. There is a tendency to go into a feeding frenzy, you know, just like the mackerel. When you're starting to catch mackerel in any numbers, you just want to keep on catching them and catching them and catching them. And I've heard stories about people with buckets full, emptying the buckets into the dustbin when they get to the car park. That's not right, okay? Shows no respect for the fish. But anyway, enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Um, today, we're going to be looking at a beginner's guide to catching mackerel. Okay, so for 50 pounds, you can go into your local tackle shop. I'm in Tony's at the moment, but most tackle shops will do a deal. And for around 50 pounds, you can pick up a real good deal, an adequate rod, an adequate reel, the end tackle, the weights, all you need to go and catch mackerel. So we're gonna put a shock leader on this. Tony's gonna to show you the knot, um, and then um, it's done. Sorry, over to you, Tony. That's okay. What you find, if you put a 60 pound shock leader on this, you've got small rings on the yeah. rod, um, you'll get a massive great big knot, it'll yeah. clatter up through the rings, yeah. and you'll be in here, us repairing your rod yeah, all day yeah. long, yeah. broken rings, yeah. and also it'll cause you grief. So what yeah. we do, the most modern thing is a tapered leader. Tapered you get five on a spool, yeah. they're fantastic, right? right? What you do, they're very long. Yeah. So we tend to get rid of six, about seven or eight foot off, yeah. which I've already done. Yeah. So what happens is this is 15 pound, yeah. uh, and this is 15 pound. Right, okay. But what you do is by getting rid of that, that's about 19 now, so okay. it's a bit stronger. Yeah, yeah. All you do is put a granny knot in there, nothing special. And then what you do after that is... Is that just once through the loop or twice? Yeah, just a normal knot. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. I haven't pulled it up yet. Yeah. Because I'm going to put the yeah. line through it. Yeah. Okay, this is the line from the reel. Now, when you pull it up tight, what you find is you scour that line. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's weak. So what I do, I tend to pull through about another two, yeah. uh, you know, sort of four inches, cut it where you've scoured it, yeah. like that, so it's clean. And then it's not marked the line, right, okay. so it's not damaged. Yeah. And what I find, a lot of people struggle. I've got bad eyesight, I've got yeah. a detached retina, okay? Yeah. So what I do, I put my finger in there, if you mm. can see. Yeah. 
and it becomes twice as easy and if you're blind like me right. look, yeah. ready so you go one two three four about five or six times mm -hmm. then this is where people get confused but you come back down look one two three say about four or five yeah. but see where I've got my finger now yeah, yeah, yeah. right well this becomes so easy just to put it to through it. rather yeah. than mess about yeah, 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 yeah. once I pulled it through just pull it through with your teeth and yeah. then just pull both ends slowly but what you've got to do yeah. you must wet your line yeah all you your knots won't pull up unless you wet them yeah and also you just you keep wetting it can you can dip it in water yeah. if you want yeah but see what that gives you is the perfect knot yeah you cut your ends yeah um Cause not the, too close because sometimes well what I do is I cut them yeah. and then I'll really test it afterwards yeah, yeah, because yeah. what happens is you cut it too close and sometimes it'll just go it yeah. just slip yeah, through yeah. but that's a lovely knot if yeah. I don't know if you can see it on the I camera the white there. you just trim the ends with a right. sorry I'll trim I'll get that and I'll trim the ends for you yeah. there and just get that behind so you can see the knot right if you hold if you just hold that line there yeah. And scissors, and I'll trim the ends for you. I say so go close as you can, but you don't go silly close. You with me? Yeah. Because it's not going to be a problem because it's not so small. Yeah. And remember, you've got 19 pound to 15, so that makes that twice as strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. your knot. If you want to have a look. And that's, yeah, that's a strong it. knot. You can oh yeah, that. it's really strong. Yeah. yeah. So that won't break. Yeah. It's going nowhere. Yeah. Um, and basically, there's your leader. Your leader tapers up to 50. Right. If it's still too long. Yeah. Cut a little bit off the other end and yeah. make it about 45, yeah. but as long as you're 40 yeah. pound over head, you're, yeah. you're in a clearance zone. You, you, you want to have enough shop leader so you've got three or four wraps around your spool and it's up through the you tip want eye ring. Four wraps through the, the spool yeah. Yeah. and then you want up through the rings down to yeah. your thing. Yeah. And a little bit more won't hurt because yeah. it's tapered, it'll yeah. just fly out anyway. Yeah. What, you know. what do you put on the end of the shop leader to attach the, the mackerel feathers to? You want a, a normal swivel on the end of here. Okay. So would you throw a swivel in? And yeah, and then what you do, you use a link clip, which yeah. you've got, yeah. on the top of your feathers. Same thing, through the, through the swivel. I'm afraid my eyes ain't great. Get there in the end. Right, I'll do the same thing again. Right, I've got the swivel. Yeah. Finger in there. Yeah. Makes life so much easier. Four or five times round. Okay. On this occasion, a couple down just to lock it. It stops it slipping. Yeah, yeah. A normal standard blood, blood knot will slip. Yeah. Half blood knot, but if you if you go down, so it you locks do a, it. You do a tuck, like a tuck. Yeah, and then it'll lock it. Well, again, it. yeah. Again, uh, make sure you wet it. Yeah. Pull it right up. Gob oil. And then described. what happens is this will be on. Yeah. Same right. way tied on your yeah. feathers at the yeah. top. And then when you've got your mackerel, when you reel in, just you just unclip it straight away. And it's easier when there's line on it. So you'll come in yeah. and you just, the mackerel are there. Yeah, yeah. Rather than mess about getting them off, just unclip it. Unclip it, get your mate to get them off. Yeah, why you cast can, out again yeah, and get some more. Because yeah, yeah, they're, they're there for a limited time. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while they're there, you've got to make, make hay while the sun shines, you know? Yeah. So, pretty easy. Right, it. so I'm going to get down the beach and I'm going to show it catch mackerel. Okay, so um, I've come down the beach now um, to put all this gear together. Uh, you probably see behind me there are already people fishing. Um, you need to get, this time of the year, you need to get down the beach early because um, in an hour or so this beach will be full of swimmers. And um, for safety's sake, it's not a good idea to be casting mackerel feathers out amongst swimmers. So we're going to put this together and we're going to have a quick go and see if we can't catch some mackerel. So let's look at, it, look at the gear. We've got the rod in its bag. Obviously you need to open the bag. Um, get the rod out. The, the, the rod we bought is a is a two-piece rod. So you can take the labels off. <laughs> Line the eyes up. Um, we don't want 
that coming, coming loose while, while we're casting. Um, and uh, good idea to, to leave the bail arm in place so that we, 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 we've loosened off the drag and then we feed the line up through the eyes. A bit of line, and then we'll tighten that drag back off because we don't want we don't want um, too much loose line. That's the drag nice and tight. And then the mackerel feathers. We bought a couple of different types here, so we've got these um, hawk eyes, which are very very attractive. Got a luminous tip to them, big red tails, um, or we've got the simple silvery ones. Now it's quite bright. So I think I'm going to try the silvery ones uh, and give those a go. So we need a little swivel. So unravel and untangle these. They're always, they're always done up in a, in a tight um, bundle of line which takes a little time to untangle. Now there's, there's, no, there's no rule on this but you see how they're tied onto the, um, onto the snood there, they, the actual line of the snood lies up from the, um, from the main line. Now I like to put these onto my, my rigs so that, the, that that is uppermost because it gives them a little bit more action. Now, the way we're going to attach the swivel is we'll go to the top loop. These are determined to tangle themselves up. So we'll go to the top loop. And we'll just feed that through the swivel. over the back of the swivel again so that's now looped over that swivel and that swivel is going to clip into the clip that we tied on to the end of our shock leader so that clips in place so that's a part quick release you can see how the snoods are up from that so we've got more action on the on the on the little, little feathers and we're going to attach the lead by the same means. We're just going to thread it through the eye of the lead and then um, bottom loop through the eye of the lead. And then put the loop over the lead. got the lead in place. Now I think it's a good idea just to test all the knots in this because you didn't tie this you don't know how good those knots are. So give it a good a good pull to make sure all the knots are good. You want to do all your best efforts and then cast out and find the loser a lot before you cast. And then we'll get on with casting it. Bring the clip up to the rod tip. So the bail arm is facing towards us. We put, take hold of the line with our finger and we hold that against the rod and then we open the bail arm so it's now our finger that is replacing is, is holding the line and then it's a very simple easy lazy log so all we're going to do is we're going to reach out behind us okay and then look where we're going to be cast and make sure there's nobody swimming out there and then we're going to pull the rod forward and then we're going to pull on the butt, butt end so and there you go, first cast. And then it's a sink and draw. So once we come into contact with the lead, we pull it in and then we wind. We pull it in and then we wind. We pull it in 
and then rewind. You don't want any less line than this. You can see now that there's a little bit of a lip on the on the spool here. Uh, any more, any deeper than that, and you're, it's going to restrict your casting distance. Now I've not lost any line. That's just because this line has tightened down, it sinks down uh, through use. So if you're if you're spooling your own reel up, you want to make sure that you that you're you're up near the lip. You don't want it right over the lip because it'll end up spooling off the spool but you want it up to the lip, so I would suggest you don't want to go any deeper than that. Well, so I think you'll agree, uh, for £50, and that's all this has cost me, a great way of spending a morning and a great way of getting your breakfast now i'm not going to get my breakfast out of this today i'm going to have to go and buy myself some bacon and make myself a bacon sandwich but i will come back down and we will catch some mackerel um, you don't need to get a rod license to fish in the united kingdom you can go and fish off the sea all i would ask and and and, and uh, is that you are safe that you do it safely put a shock leader on your reel uh, make sure that there aren't people swimming in front of you when you're casting make sure that you give yourself a bit of space from the other people fishing etc etc and Stay safe, stay sane, stay fishing. There's lots of people down here enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the beach. There's plenty of people getting in the water now. There's paddle boarders and swimmers, and there are still people fishing. And there's lots of people here sitting waiting for the map to turn up. They will turn up. So, catch you later. Yeah, because the mackerel aren't always here. So they come and go. Um, Tend to be driving the white bait ahead of them, so don't just think that you've come down and you're not caught and there's something wrong. If the fish aren't in front of you, you're not going to catch them. Um, I've had a few casts today, slightly different day, overcast, so the sea's nice and calm and the water clarity is amazing. But um, the mackerel aren't showing up. That's not to say that in an hour's time they don't suddenly appear. So you do have to persevere and you keep on trying until you start catching fish. Right, well, we're back down the beach again. The mackerel are in, because I can see them. It's just a case of uh, casting them. There's a big shoulder of them out there. Big shoulder of them out there, a bit far off. And there's a big shoulder of them there. There's a guy down there with a, with a landing net catching white bait. So, uh, Let's get this out there and see if we can't get some mackerel. You can see the white bait are all washed up on the beach here. The mackerel have driven the white bait up onto the uh, onto the shore. And if you have a look at matching the hatch. So you can see my mackerel feathers alongside those white bait, similar sort of size and uh, nice silvery colour. More haste, less speed. I'm in a rush to get casting out. Here we go. Here we go. Right, the best way I find to dispatch mackerel 
rather than messing around and just leaving a flap on the beach. You put your finger inside their mouth, put your thumb on the back of their head, and you crack the, their spine. And that's it, they're dead. So you're not leaving them flapping around on the shore, it's dead. All right, if you've got a bucket, put them in a bucket. Now, you've got to know in your mind how many you need. And once you've caught that number, that's when you stop. Don't keep slaughtering them. But I mean, look at the mackerel here, they're going crazy. Look at the white bait, they're driven up on the beach here. So the mackerel have driven those white bait up. If you look into the water, the water is black with the white bait. See if we can get a string full. And then that will be my lot. Moving along the beach here now. So let's cast, cast to the shoal. And there, straight on, straight on to mackerel. They hit, hit it as the lures hit the water, I'm into mackerel. And I think I've probably got several on here now. That's definitely putting a bend in this rod. Yeah, got a string full. And this is what happens if you if you don't wind them straight in, is they swim around each other and uh, you end up with a bit of a tangle. You see a uh, second's in attention there and uh, they wrapped around each other and made a right mess. But these leaves are old. Yeah, out. And as soon, as quick as they appeared, they're not there anymore. So what a cracking start to the day, all right? Got down here, all I've spent is 50 pounds, all right? 50 pounds for a cheap rod, red and rig set up. Um, most tackle shops will do you that sort of deal. Um, see what else they'll throw in. I mean, I've got two sets of mackerel feathers as well. Um, and the weights and swivels and little bits and bobs and uh, the tackle shop very kindly put a um, shop needle on there for me. I can't, I can't, I can't reiterate how important it is to have that shop leader because you're casting backwards and forwards out there. It just stops you cracking off and injuring something. And I've got enough mackerel there for my breakfast. So happy days. When the mackerel are in like this, you can take the mackerel feathers off and just put a lure on. Much more fun. A lot, lot more selective, you're not catching lots and lots of fish and there's a little bit of skill involved in that. So this rod will handle quite a reasonable lure. Uh, get yourself a few um, nice lures, we'll perhaps talk about those in another video. And come down here lure fishing for mackerel, that's when it really gets fun. I'm going home to have mackerel with my breakfast now, so I'll catch you all later. So we're just walking back and here's Tom, he's, he's having a go for some and he's got a few on. Now obviously he's not fishing with a budget set up, he's got a good, uh, you know, a good set. But there you go, nice oh, couple of big... Carp rod. It's a carp rod. It's a very expensive it? reel and a very cheap old carp. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have a quick look at how I prepare mackerel for uh, a quick meal. Now, you can just gut them and cook them whole, to be quite honest, eat them off the bone. And that's, that's a per perfectly adequate way of doing it. And it's probably one of my favourite ways of doing it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare these so that they're almost boneless. Uh, and all we do, we don't even bother gutting them, so they've come straight from the sea, you can see they're nice and fresh. Um, we're going to cut an angle in there like that, and then we turn the knife around and we run it down the flank of the fish. All the way down. And there we have one lovely fillet. Turn the fish over, same thing on the other side.
another lovely filling. I'm going to discard that. Now there are there is still some bones in this, so the rib cage is still intact here. So all we're going to do is take that sharp knife and we're just going to run it underneath those ribs and cut that piece of flesh out. So there's a tiny bit of wastage there, but um, it means we are getting rid of the bone. Same thing on that side. So we've got two nice fillets of mackerel there. Give them a little rinse. Give them a little rinse. And straight onto the, the grill. and into the grill. So they are, there they are in the grill. We'll have a look when they're finished. So what I did do is once the mackerel fillets were cooked through, I threw a couple of rashers of bacon on top of them. Got the bacon to cook, so the bacon fat is oozing into the mackerel as well. So it's mackerel and bacon on toast with some tomato ketchup. Mm -mm -mm.